Well, shooters and reloaders, and also three circles, passengers and members out there, it's Fortune Cookie 45LC coming to you from the hot lead zone, Express. And what we have here are three cases each of 44 Russian on the left, 44 Special in the middle, and 44 Magnum on the right. Now, we as reloaders and shooters have come to understand and appreciate that the primer signs really give us a good hint about what the pressure level is in the loads we're shooting. And we get pretty good at looking at the primer signs. Well, here's the exercise for all of you out there. And based on what you see with the primer signs, which load do you think has the highest pressure? The 44 Magnum load, the 44 Special load, or the 44 Russian load? If you were going to rate them on a basis of lowest to highest, which would be the highest, which would be the lowest? Give you a look at, at the top two cases. We have three examples of each case chosen from random from 20 fired cases in a test that we did recently. So here's the top two casings, and here are the bottom two casings. Lowest pressure to highest pressure. Now, of course, we all know how freshly loaded primers look. These, of course, have zero pressure primer signs. Now, bear in mind that we have other pressure signs that we reloaders use, beginning with a degree of recoil. The more recoil a load has, the higher pressure it has, as well as how well did the rounds extract or eject, and are there any effects upon the functioning of the firearm after these were fired? And the answer to that was all of these rounds ejected and extracted nicely, and the functioning of the gun was perfect throughout all of these. Notice that the degree of primer flattening, which we really look at as a primer pressure sign, there are some problems with the primer flattening because it seems that this one has the most flattening. And that might have fooled us into thinking this one had higher pressure. And the other is the primer indent. And it seems that the primer indent is difficult to tell which one's the lowest. This one would seem to have the highest pressure from primer indent, but yet the primer flattening is nil. And in different lighting, the primer indent might fool us into thinking that this one has pretty high pressure more than this one, when the reverse is true. It turns out that the same load of 7.5 grains of unique was used in each one of these casings. And this one here, with the pressure signs being what they are, yielded 900 and seven feet per second muzzle velocity. This one here with the 44 Special, the same 7.5 grain of unique charge, yielded 966 feet per second. And this one here, 7.5 grains of unique, yielded 1,050 feet per second. So based on those velocities, this one had the highest pressure, this one had the medium pressure, and this one had the lowest pressure. Now, of course, we're still pretty good at reading primer signs, but this kind of leads us to understand that primer signs alone cannot be used to assess pressure, but we do get a good hint None of these rounds have high pressure. 
And this is in spite of the fact that seven grains of unique was considered pretty close to maximum and we went with 7.5 grains here. And 7.5 grains of unique in the 44 Russian is unheard of to put that much powder in a 44 Russian round. And yet, that's supposed to be pretty high pressure. We could probably go a little more here, and definitely a little more here. And of course, the 44 Magnum, we can go a lot more here. Bye for now.